Well, today is a good day and I'm super excited. I bought myself a professional spiral dough mixer because <laughs> now we're going to make bread again, but we used to do the flip and fold to build gluten network. Today we're going to put this one to the test and see what can be done in terms of gluten buildup. New gadget in the family. New gadget and I cannot <laughs> help it. So, first we have to prove our yeast. We're going to be using a total of one kilo of flour, so I'm going in with 720-730 milliliter of uh, water, about 72-73% hydration. And then we're going in with half a tablespoon of nice Greek honey. Oh, how come you didn't put sugar? I've, I've, I've actually been watching Vito Jacopelli from Italy and that, and he uses honey for his yeast proof, and he says it gives better flavor. Finally, so, uh, I've been telling you for a long time, yeah, but you yeah, didn't yeah. want to trust in me. Yeah, well, Vito, he knows, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah. 16 grams of uh, dry yeast, and now we just want to get this mixed up well, so we can proof our yeast before we move on with this baby. And when you see this, then you know that your yeast is well and alive. So let's move on with the dry ingredients. So we go in with 750 grams of uh, Caputo Manitoba, very high protein content, very strong flour. How much is that, 13 or? 14%, 14, 14 wow. point something percent protein and a baking strength of W380. And then 250 grams of whole wheat flour, gives nice texture and flavor. And then we're going in with 25 grams of sea salt, 2.5% of the flour weight. Sounds like a lot, but it matches perfectly. And then to enhance the bread a little bit, we are using Baker's Enzyme, which is Amalise. Send me a message if you want to know more about it, but that increases the crust and the lifetime of the bread, and it makes a bit of rice also. So it's a good product to add. That's not artificial or anything? No, though. no, no. It's, it's, it's the normal enzymes, which already exists in wheat flour. You're just increasing the, uh, ah, okay, the amount yeah, of okay. enzyme to, uh, to help the bread. Yeah. And then to make this a little bit darker and give it a little bit of a roasted flavor, we are going in with 35 grams of malt flour. You can use anywhere between 2 to 5% of the flour weight, so 20 to 50 grams in, the, in this case. So I'm going in in the middle, 35 grams of that. And then all of our bubbly water here goes in. <laughs> that very, proved very light. nicely. Yeah. And we close the safety here. And then we set the timer to 20 minutes. And as you can see here, the ball rotates and the, the hook rotates the opposite direction. And that builds up an amazing gluten structure. We will show you in maybe 15, 16 minutes when we start seeing how the dough comes together. So let this go now, 15 minutes, and I'll see you again. Well, that went a bit faster than I expected. It's apparently a very good machine because as you can see now, 15 minutes in, and the dough is super strong and tight, and it has released from the ball on all sides here. So let me turn it a little bit, and then I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil on my hands and put a little bit here on my surface so I can get the dough out, and also a little bit here in the bottom of the ball. Not too much, that's why I'm using my hands. I don't want it to be soaking in oil. I just want it to be a little bit greasy. Then we grab our dough here, and you see, Wow. <laughs> How strong it is. It comes out like, uh, and it's yeah. not sticky at all. It's, uh, it's really strong, actually. Let me turn it a little bit here. That's the only thing. The ball is not detachable on this one, because if you buy one with detachable <laughs> ball, they cost a Then you cry with the price. price. <laughs> nah, so, but I can live with this, because you see the ball is clean on its own. This is super strong and tight now, and really stressed. So now we fold this into a nice ball like this, tied it up, and you see, and you see now the color in the dough because of yeah, the mold that's flour. The mold. Yeah, that's what I want to say actually, it's a bit darker. Yeah, yeah, that will give a nice flavor and it's gonna be also giving some roasted flavor, so it's gonna be cool. Now, this goes into a bowl and we close it up and I'm gonna put it in the oven, which I have just the light on because it's winter and it's a little bit chilly here but in the oven room with the light on, I can keep like 25 degrees. So I'm gonna put it there for one hour and then I'll see you again. So, an hour in and our dough has proved. And look at that, <laughs> that is ginormous. Looks very good. We have two ways we can go. 
we can split this in two and shape it into two boule, like a ball-shaped dough, that's why they're named boule. We've done that before when we made the country-style bread. There's a link down below how to do that. But I think today we're going to go another way. Okay. I think we will shape them into loaf shape and not deflate the dough. So then we're going to go first with some flour over top here. And this is the top of the dough, and that's important to remember. I'll show you when we get it out what I mean by that. Give it some flour so that's ready. All around the sides, and that's important. Then we flour our work surface. And I have seen all those that throw flour like this, but then it's all over the place, so a small strainer like this works. <laughs> they don't have as a camera woman their wife to beat on them, that's right. <laughs> exactly. They so they can make all the mess they want. Yeah, exactly. And the tools here also give them a dusting. Then with a flexible dough cart, we move some flour down the sides of the dough here to help it release. We've done this before when we make, for instance, ciabatta or, or other types of dough. Oppa. Oh, there we go. That's massive. So now, as I said, the top there is obviously on the other side. We have the bottom. So we want to give that a dusting also because we don't want this to stick anywhere. It is relatively high hydration. I'm sure this is good. And then we're going to split it down the middle. And they didn't deflate at all. No, 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 no. And then we're going to roll this over. So we have the <laughs> top back. And we give it a little bit of a shape here. That looks nice to me. And then we have some baking paper ready. There we go. And we didn't lose any air here. And that is the, the trick. But that has also a lot to do with the gluten strength we build up in the yeah, machine. Yeah, of course. I mean, when we do the flip and fold, it takes about four hours to do all this because you have to flip and fold three times and wait in between. This is one time in the machine, one up, and then you have your, uh, your loaves ready. It saves a lot of time, actually, and effort. Yeah, it does. That and machine. here we have them lying nicely. We're going to cover them with a couple of kitchen towels to let them proof. I want them to build a little bit of skin so we get a nice good crust. So we will leave them here until they feel correct. They have to be a little bit, this is too bouncy yet because now we stressed it a little bit again. So now it's time for a little bit of meditation here to relax. <laughs> and at the same time, we're gonna preheat our oven to 230 and I've put two pizza stones uh, in the middle and I'll walk you through the rest when they're ready to go in the oven. Okay, we proofed our breads and let's see how they look. Let's, ooh. They are big and beautiful. That's nice. And number two. <laughs> and now see here, when you push now, it leaves a little bit of an indentation before it was puffing back like, and that's when you know that the bread is uh, good and ready to get to the oven. But first, bread lame, we want to score our bread. Say something like that. Deflates a little bit. That's fully okay. It will rise in the oven. Maybe we give it a third here. Something like that. Then we take our pizza peel and we move it in on our pizza stones here. There we go. Second one. And now comes a little trick. Hot water in a pan in the bottom. That will steam a lot here, so be careful. And we want that to create steam in the oven room so that the loaves, they are allowed to rise before they form a crust. So we get a nice oven rise and then a good crust. 20 minutes in, so let's give it a look and see how we're doing. Pull them out of there. Wow, they got <laughs> big. Actually, I should have scored them a bit deeper, I think. Oh, it smells so nice. Ah, but I want to bake them. They're getting there, but I want to bake them harder than this because they're not... They're not too dark in the bottom, and I want to get a really good crust on top, so another 10 minutes probably. 10 more minutes, and now they're done, and nothing like the smell of freshly baked bread. It's fantastic. Look at that. Oh, my. Look at that. I mean, and now listen to this. That is just <laughs> fantastic crust. Now we have to endure the torture of letting them cool down a little bit before we can cut into them. 
Well, probably I should have waited three more minutes, but now I can't wait anymore and I want to cut into this. So let's see how we did here and now listen. <laughs> I mean, listen oh. to that and look at that. Crunchy and the crumb is perfect, soft, moist and nice. That is just good country style bread. Still warm, difficult to cut. Let me get a small part of this. And then I want to try this with some of our homemade orange marmalade. Of course, there's a link down below how to make that. That thing is fantastic. Mm. This is just fantastic. The malt flour gives a nice, like, toasty flavor to the bread. And with the orange marmalade on top, I mean, this on a brunch or a breakfast. This is perfect, perfect sandwich bread. The only thing I can say, buy a spiral mixer and make bread.